So you're thinking of installing a swivel screen mount for your Tesla Model 3 or Y? Well, I'm Frugal Tesla Guide, and I'm going to help you decide if it's right for you, and if so, why one particular mount is the only way to go. For anyone with a Tesla Model 3 or Y, I'm sure many of you have looked at the design of the screen and wondered why it doesn't swivel. I mean, it only seems natural because unlike the Model S and X, including the current design, the screen sticks out several inches from the dash, leaving plenty of room for some movement in all directions. Now, the screen is screaming to be tilted. Well, thankfully, a few years ago, someone decided to dig deeper into this. In 2019, Matt from Tech Forum decided to explore the idea of a tilting screen. And in September of that year, he built his first prototype and released the first ever tilting screen mount a month later. I even had an opportunity to install and review one shortly after he released the mount. Now check out that video if you're interested. I'll post a link in the description below. Now, although you could customize the tilting angle of the screen, it was still in a locked position, meaning if you wanted to adjust it, you needed to loosen a couple of hex screws first. Well, Matt took it to the next level and built his first prototype of the left and right swiveling mount in May of 2020, with the full release a month later. Once again, the first to bring this to the market. Now he built his first two axis prototype, left and right, up and down, in December of 2020, with a producible prototype a month later in 2021. After production began in June of 2021, he applied for a patent on what he's calling the Atlas Mount. Now it was approved in mid-August and released the same day. Once again, the first to release anything of its kind. His latest version is now black to match the color of the new mount cover he just recently designed and will now come with the new kits. Now this is truly a brilliant design, and if you ask me, based on feel alone, is as close to OEM as you can get if Tesla were to have a swiveling screen in the Model 3 and Y. Now if you want to see the thought process behind the design, I highly recommend you watch his detailed video on the Atlas mount. I'll post a link to that in the video description below. Now, unfortunately, brilliant designs tend to be copied, and usually the lower price tag makes it tempting to buy the copies over the original, but they typically don't have the same attention to detail. Now, for some products, that may not be all that important, but when you're talking about the 15 minute screen on your Tesla Model 3 or Y, you don't want to make the mistake of sacrificing quality to save a few bucks. Now, I do need to go on record by saying I did purchase an Atlas mount from Matt at Tech Forum for full price. I've had communication with him about the mount and his patent, but I have nothing to gain other than your trust. Now, to make it fair, I also purchased a mount from one of the competitors. And after looking at all of the different options, and there are at least 10 or more, the images look almost 100% identical to one another. Now, what it looks like to me is all of the different brands are getting their mounts from the same factory, most likely out of China. However, the Atlas mount was designed and manufactured in the United States. In fact, 90% of the parts are specially designed and made for the Atlas mount. So before we get in the car and test these mounts out, I thought I would take them out of the box so you could kind of see them side by side. So my right on your left is the generic brand coming from China, and my left is the Atlas mount from Tech Forum made in the United States. So you can see everything that kind of comes in the uh, box right here. Of course, you've got the mount itself. You've got all the tools, so theoretically you can 
disassemble or take the uh, current mount off of your car and then of course put this one on with all the tools that they can give you. You've got the uh, two different types of se temperature sensors in the car uh, for the newer and older models so they provide you with one of each. You only need one of them. Uh, then of course you've got the plastic uh, cover here uh, and you've also got a monstrosity of an Allen wrench which adjusts the tension uh, of this mount here. Uh, but it only, but it actually adjusts both the pitch, the up and down, and the left and right. You cannot adjust uh, the tension of those separately. Now, of course, over here, what comes in the box, of course, you've got the mount itself. Uh, you do have a much smaller Allen wrench, which uh, this actually adjusts the tension of the pitch, the up and down. This screw or this nut right here is what adjusts that left and right tilt here. Uh, and then, of course, you've got the, this is actually newly designed uh, plastic cover that comes on here. Now, real quick side note is the fact that this, when you order one, which by the way, as I record this, there's about a two week delay uh, in shipping. Uh, so around the first week of March of 2022 is when the new colored mount is gonna be coming out. So it's gonna be a black colored mount. Uh, and that's to, to match uh, basically this plastic cover here. And Matt will go into more detail as to why the new one's black. But even though it's a different color, the one that you'll be getting is the exact same mount. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, so a couple of uh, things. Well, first of all, we'll take a look at these two mounts and put them side by side. You can see they are designed differently. As I mentioned, this one's on two axes, which is actually a good thing. You want the two axes and, and you'll see why the one axis can actually create problems here. Um, also, another key difference that I'd really like to point out is this right here. This is, for me, a deal breaker, of course, among other things, but this right here alone is a big deal breaker for me. And here's why. When you think of your Tesla Model 3 or Y, it was not designed for the screen to move left and right and up and down. So anytime you're moving that screen, you are putting strain on the cable between the car and the screen. So this one, for example, is you're moving the screen left, down, up and right, uh, left, left and right, up and down. Uh, it's putting strain on that cable and could potentially over time cause damage. This one, because of this design right here, the cable goes right in there. So when you're twisting this around, moving left and right, up and down, it's not. It, this is basically taking all of that strain off of the cable and you're not gonna get any damage to that cable. Now the chances of you damaging the cable, even with this one, are pretty slim, but I don't know about you, I'm not willing to really take that chance. So that overall are some of the similarities and some of the differences between the two. Uh, next we're gonna take a look at installation and then we'll get in the car and see how these things perform. The installation of both will take you about 30 to 60 minutes, depending on your skill level. Now this is not an installation video and that deserves a video of its own. And if enough of you request that, I will be more than happy to put one together. And with that said, Matt from Tech Forum has an installation video and I'll post that link in the description. Now there are three main things we'll look at how fluid the motion is, the range of motion, and the number of viewing angles. Now, when rotating the generic brand from left to right, along with up and down, it does have a smooth and fluid feel, although the up and down motion does feel a bit on the clunky side. The range of motion is what you would expect from left to right. It will touch the dash when the plastic cover isn't installed, but stop short on both sides when it is. The up and down motion is not what you'd expect. First of all, the range of motion in either direction is not very impressive, especially as you tilt it down. Secondly, it feels more like that of a rear view mirror, but with a much smaller range of motion. Now this actually makes it more difficult to make the adjustment you need, and you will most likely need to use both hands, which leads us to the number of viewing angles. Now one could technically argue that the angles are unlimited and that certainly is true, but how many of them are usable is a different story. Now if you're lucky, you might be able to adjust the angle of your screen exactly how you want it. 
but most likely you will only be able to get close to what you really want. Now this is because many times a simple tilt up or down will make the screen crooked and you will need to rotate it left or right in order to make it level. And this will take it out of the exact spot you're looking for. Now, quite honestly, it's difficult to navigate it in all of the different directions because there will be many times you simply can't move it in the direction you need, making it even more frustrating to find the position you want. Being on only one axis will also create problems when swapping between the passenger and driver. For example, the passenger may need the screen for something and once they're done, you swivel it back in your direction. Now it may have started off level for the passenger, but it won't be for you once again, forcing you to make another adjustment. Simply put, this would not be an easy screen to use when driving and the overall functionality of the screen feels awkward and clumsy and isn't what you'd expect when it comes to a screen that moves left and right and up and down. Now I know this is an issue for some people, but both mounts do bring the screen lower from the original screen mount. All right, so to give you an idea with the generic brand that we're looking at here, it's kind of in the center position here and it puts it about six and a half inches from the center console. Now keep in mind, the center console is the first generation. I couldn't tell you the exact uh, distance from the second generation, but it's probably about the same. And I'm six foot two inches. This is my driving position and it is about one and a half to one and three quarter inches from my knee. Not even a concern, you can kind of see the distance there. Now, if I move the screen in this position, which well, with this one, I need to make it straight again. Ugh, okay, let's get this straight. All right, yeah, that's about as straight as I can get it. Ugh, my goodness, there we go. All right, so from the uh, center console, at least on this part, it is the same, same distance, about six and a half inches. And from my knee, it actually brings it farther away from my knee. Uh, so now it's closer to about three inches from my knee. So plenty of room here, certainly not a concern. And this is the generic mount that we're looking at. and right swivel of the Atlas mount is also smooth and fluid and feels like it wants to move but also stay put once you stop. However, the up and down motion, although smooth, it is a little more difficult to move, but for good reason. To make sure it doesn't drop when you hit a bump or push toward the dash when braking hard. It also allows you to swivel back and forth while preventing the up and down axis from moving. Now the different feel of the left and right motion compared to the up and down illustrates the fact that once again, that this is a two axis mount, unlike anything else on the market. The range of motion between left and right is what you'd expect and takes it close to either side of the dash, while the up and down range is far more than you will ever need. So as far as the screen goes up and down and left and right, there is the potential for a viewing angle for everything in between. Simply put, you have unlimited viewing angles and all of them are usable. Okay, maybe not all of them, but you get the idea. The separate axes also helps keep the screen level at all times. Now, unlike the generic brand mount, if for any particular reason the passenger tilts the screen their way and you eventually take it back, it will be level. It's one simple move from right to left and you have nothing else to adjust. Now, this is a mount that will allow you to truly adjust the screen to the exact position you want without any pushback from the screen. If you want to move it up or down, it will go in a straight line and stay level. Now it's the same thing if you need to move it a little to the left or right. The Atlas mount just works. If the Model Y and 3 came out of the factory with a swiveling screen, this is how it would feel.
It works the way you would expect it to, and quite frankly, the way it should. So one of the things I didn't take into account when I was measuring from the Chinese mount is the actual uh, tilting height really makes a big difference as far as how far it is from the, uh, from the center console. So I'm gonna take it from a kind of a generic uh, angle that I think a lot of people would probably like. And this looks pretty standard and typical here, pointing out straight by the way. And that puts it at about six and a half inches uh, from the center console, maybe a little bit less than that. I actually prefer to have it a little bit higher tilt, say right, right around here. Yeah, that's about where I like it. So you can see here with a little bit of a higher tilt, now it's closer to about six and three quarter inches. And you'll also notice the distance between my knee. As I mentioned earlier, I'm six foot two inches. Uh, so that's not even an issue here for me. This is where I typically sit. This is my sitting position for when I'm driving the car. And when I tilt, it toward me the way I like it right here, it's even farther away. So it's not even an issue uh, when it comes to how far it is from my knee and the height uh, from the center console. And um, yes, you do lose a little bit of that sight, but th that is to be expected with these mounts as it does lower them. Just from the performance alone, you can clearly see the differences. But Matt from Tech Forum was able to give a good explanation as to what sets his apart from the generic brand. This is the mount itself. And uh, you can see the, uh, how close the production mount is to the prototype. Very close. So these are now anodized black for a number of reasons. The surface is harder wearing, but also when the plastic cover is installed, you can see a little bit of the metal parts between the upper and lower covers. So now we anodize the mounts black to hide that, to give it a more um, uniform look. A number of people have asked, what about the Chinese mount? How does my mount differ from theirs? There's one key difference uh, beyond the fact that they're infringing on my patent, and we're looking into that, my attorney's looking into that right now, but uh, my mount has a separate left-right pivot point and a separate pitch angle pivot point. Uh, they are uh, in separate, they are separate pivots for a couple of reasons, and that is to prevent the screen from tipping left or right and to hold it level so when you swing the screen left to right, pitch it forward and back, the top edge of the screen, the top and bottom edge of the screen stay perfectly level. That was extremely important. This angle to keep this, this plane horizontal, uh, that was critical. And the Chinese mount uses one knuckle that allows left, right swivel and forward back pitch, but it also, it's got slop in it. And, and the screen, you try to pitch it and it angles. So, uh, this was, we went to great pains to make enough room within the, the area that we had to allow two separate pivot points. There are also different pivot points because the pitch angle needs to be stiffer than the swivel angle. I found that once you get the pitch angle where you like it, you tend to not move it. But you still want to grab the corner of the screen and swivel it without it changing the pitch angle. And the way to do that is to make two separate pivot points. And therefore, we ship this mount with the pitch angle pivot about 30, 40% stiffer than the left, right swiveling pivot tension. That way you can swivel it left and right without changing the pitch angle. But if you want, you can grab the screen and change the pitch angle, but it will automatically want to stay in that pitch position. So when you swivel it left and right, the pitch angle stays consistent. So a very unique feature of our mount. Uh, it's extremely heavy duty CNC machined out of billet blocks of aluminum. And uh, we're really proud of this. A lot, a lot of time went into developing this mount as well as manufacturing each one. A lot of time went into the cover. Believe it or not, it took more time to develop the cover than the mount. And that's a whole nother story altogether. Now, if you made it this far in the video, then you are most likely interested in something like this. Which one you choose is ultimately up to you. I'm here to help you see what you'll be getting for your money from both mounts. Now it's obvious which one I'm keeping. Now I may be frugal, but I'm not cheap. I spent a lot of money on my Tesla Model 3 and user experience is important to me. 
and I'm not willing to sacrifice that in order to save a few dollars. Now, speaking of dollars, the generic brand will cost between $200 and $300, which is a little confusing since they are all essentially the same product. The Atlas mount from Tech Forum is $345 for the Model 3 and $355 for the Model Y. But if you use my discount code FTG35 at checkout, you'll get $35 off the price, bringing the price down to $310 for the 3 and $320 for the Model Y. As I mentioned earlier, I have no financial interest in promoting that mount, and I do not get any commission when you use my discount code. So what do you think? Is this something you'd consider? Let me know in the comments section below. Well, thank you all so much for watching and you know the drill. Like, subscribe, and stay positively charged.